Welcome back to Swan Gully, where this week we're pushing our vehicles even harder. Oh. Smooth, baby, smooth. Ooh, I was in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tell you what, there is something special about day two at a four wheel drive park. I cannot wait to see what Ben has in store for us. All right, Ben, this is looking pretty good. Yep, you got articulation on every point along this track. <laughs> Try to get your wheels down. That's a nice section of track, especially just for a warm up. And I'm next in line, so we'll, we'll give it a crack. Good traction though, no spotter. We're talking earlier about having a spotter and this is exactly that location. Simon's got off in front, the track's pretty gnarly, but at the same time, I thought I could do it. I think he made it look harder than it needed to be. You want me to spot or are you happy to shoot it? Oh, I should be all right. Yeah, I can see exactly what you mean. Everyone's a smart As usual, patrol, he waves to the crowd. That's all he seems to do. You can really see the difference that ARB air lockers make in that situation. In the first section, when Chris was coming up, quite off camber, quite twisted with his axles, and he lost traction. Engaged that rear diff lock, and it just pushed the vehicle right through the whole obstacle. New driver on board with me today. I've got Daniel, who runs our suspension division in Brisbane. We had beads just break slightly. We heard a little bit of a ch noise. That's a little bit of air escaping from the tire. Because he's using a bit more speed and momentum, he's bounced into a rut on one side and it's just pushed the bead open. Let a little bit of air out, but fortunately the tyre had enough quality construction, enough air inside it to push that bead back and seal it, and it's been able to continue back on. Getting the right tyre pressures improve your ride and protect your tyre. The demonstration I have here pretty much shows what happens when you're off-road from a fully inflated tyre to a deflated tyre that you can still drive around obstacles on. If you've got your tyre at full pressure and you come across an obstacle or something sharp, straight away. No problem whatsoever, it'll do that. You then deflate your tyres. Let's say you normally run 40 pound, you deflate them down to 20. You can hit all these obstacles, the tyre flexes around it. So basically what that means is when you're hitting the tracks to avoid any damage, is having the right tyre pressures in your tyres. Who needs lockers? Good tyres, you can do anything. Simon, as per usual, a bit of a show off. But hey, look, when there's a big area of rocks, he wants to get the big eye of echo in there, and so he should. Oh, I think Simon's gone nuts again. I, th I don't think he realises he's got to drive back to Victoria. Let's have a crack crawling up to see how far we get. Triple diff locks engaged. I wouldn't normally recommend this, but I want to see this over like that too. Let's try something a little bit different. The size of the truck and, and its ability to climb was looking fantastic. That just couldn't make it. We chucked a couple of the treads underneath.
Didn't quite make the difference, but it was good to have a go. Well, that was unsuccessful, but I tell you what, Tread Pros, crazy steep hill, rock ledge, stupidly heavy Iveco, full of all the fruit that you'd ever want in a four wheel drive 37s. Look at them, like brand new. We gave it a few red hot cracks, did our best, front and rear diff locks on, we've got the right tyres, we've got the right suspension, we've got everything set right, but there's just a little bit too much moisture on that track. And things like this, you can really safely just back out of them, no issues, no dramas, and keep going, we'll find something else to play on. All right, we're gonna have a crack at a fairly deep mud crossing here. We bad. did it! <laughs> How easy! Yeah. The little ranger did it again. We got going and came to a beautiful creek bed. Now this creek bed is well known in this area for jeepers and rock crawlers to come out and do their testing. It's the longest rock crawling creek bed in Australia. Chris, I've heard a lot about the creek run here at Swan Gully. This is looking like the start of it. We'll give it a crack. Yeah, mate, I think you're going to have to do more than just give it a crack. It's very pretty. I think there's mighty old nicker through here. You're gonna, it's definitely going to be challenging that vehicle, I think. Thanks, Chris. Big vote of confidence. The river itself, it's just a little creek, it had a little bit of water flowing through it, just a gentle bit of water, but it was more about the boulders and about just stepping over the boulders and getting the truck with those big wheels on it. Way too big for our cars, but seeing the car hardly touch the rocks at all. That was great, it was really slow, it was challenging, and you could really see that you had to put effort into working out where you had to put the wheel and make sure you were gonna get through without too much damage. Finally going up the creek, it was great because we could actually walk up ahead, get in our mind what we thought we'd do, you know, watch where Simon went, where the vehicle went, where it struggled, where it got traction, and how it finally made it up. And, you know, we just kind of worked our way up ahead of the vehicle. So it was really great to see it going up all these different tricky sections. A lot of wet rocks got hung up a few times, but some uh, good spotting by Chris from Tread. Got to one section, it was like a series of waterfalls, and I thought, I'm going to struggle coming up. Snap the sway bar. <laughs> Have a look at that. A little Swan Gully memento for you. <laughs> we might need that for the trip home. We'll see how we go. Far out. <laughs> A couple of big rocks coming up. Nothing these 37 bar hard bosses won't eat though. Just keep it nice and gentle. Just for a long wheelbase, the diff locks and the big 37 Mickey Thompsons, they kind of got up there quite easy. I was, I was really surprised. Got Simon up to the top, which was really, really impressive to see. And once we looked at that, uh, none of the other vehicles decided to go up there. Just, there's just no way that the vehicles in these sort of touring conditions uh, would make it up there. Technical forward driving at its best. Who's next? <laughs> With no takers for the rocks, we exited via a steep bank, highlighting just how exposed and unsecured all my gear was. What it really needed was a load lid. The great thing with the load lid itself is the locking latches. The load lid's locking itself, everything's secure and I don't have to think about it again. I just want to show you how easy it is to lock and unlock the load lid. A simple quarter turn and back for the lock and you can't move the latch. And it's then a quarter turn and back will unlock. So now it's unlatched, ready to open. So it's a one-handed operation. You just do that once and then you can push it up. So one of the benefits of the optional central locking is that it taps into the car's central locking system. So we have a specially made harness that taps into the wiring. You're using the same fob that you would for the car. If you lock the car, the lid's locked. If you unlock the car, the lid's unlocked. What do you think of the big Iveco? 
I have to say I'm a little bit impressed. You, you could see I was trying to get you to exit early, but we pushed through there and some of those parts, impressive, particularly without the front locker on. The Swan Gully tracks are tough and technical. They offer the perfect challenge for our kitted out four-wheel drives and the park also attracts off-roaders at the extreme end of the scale. But next up, we had a very special guest who was going to totally blow us away with his preferred off-road weapon. I came unstuck and I bent a rack end, I think it was. Well, we bent it back at least enough to drive into town last night. It's only an hour or so away from Brisbane, and luckily enough, Mark's gone home last night and gotten onto some parts this morning. Fixed the vehicle up, gave it a wash, spit in the polish, it came out here like brand new off the showroom floor. Simon had been warming us up all morning to this surprise that was coming at lunchtime. We weren't sure it was going to be the pizza delivery man or what it was going to be. As the Iveco come around the corner, I'm looking in the front window looking for someone special. Who, who's, who's in the passenger seat with Simon? There was no one. We could hear this thing coming, and I thought first off maybe an Ultra 4. But to ask him, he'll do Oh, it wow. <laughs> the ferret scarf came around the corner. Oh, my God. I told you we might need a tank for some of that lantana. You did, you did. Hey? And oh my god, it was funny. It looks tops on the road. And a special guest, it certainly is. Hey Simon, that tank's got bigger guns than you. <laughs> hey brother, this is Tom. Hey Tom. Hey Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Tell you what, I think I've seen everything turn up to a four-wheel drive park and then boom, check this thing out. G'day, my name's Tom. Behind me is my 1962 Ferret Scout Car Mark II. It's an ex-British Army vehicle and used them from 1952 all the way up to Gulf War I. This one in particular was used by a infantry regiment in West Germany for about 15 years during the Cold War. Predominantly, it was armoured reconnaissance. So most of these vehicles were normally attached to an armoured tank regiment. And their job was to go out there, find the enemy, radio it back and hopefully not get blown up in the process. Zero to a hundred and oh, I don't know how long it'll take. <laughs> how much does this thing weigh? So at the moment it's probably sitting around about three nine and loaded for bear oh, 4.2. Absolutely 100% road legal. Comes in under 4.5 tonnes, so you can drive them on a car licence. We'll definitely give the punches a good idea of what it's like to be sitting up in the commander's seat. Tom's a fantastic guy. He knows his history. He knows the history about the vehicle, where it was used. My ears are still ringing from poor old Shoe Min squealing all the way around. That was really exciting. You should give it a try. <laughs> well, such a heavy vehicle, it's pretty thick armour plating. The acceleration performance is surprising. Right here, chaps. Okay. Tell me who. Tell you who. Ah, there's Jerry. 12 o'clock. He took it easy, not. He gave it plenty and was demonstrating just how manoeuvrable that little vehicle was. Very great, chaps. Jerry's gone. <laughs> Next victim! It was great to see the engineering that was put into a vehicle of that age. Just the technology back then. We looked at the suspension and the control arms at Bulletproof. That just shows you way back then, really had some really good suspension. Just shows we haven't really come that far. In 70 years, we're still using control arms and shocks and springs. Cool ass. It's a ripper of a thing. Little Rolls Royce engine in it, six cylinder. But wow, what a machine. It was very quick, smooth through the gears. It was explaining the particular sort of gearbox that it had and it was pre-selecting the gear. So he's actually putting it into another gear before it goes into gear, and then the gear changes were really, really smooth. He drives that really well. Like, for such an old car, he's into it, just throwing it around, having a good old time. Took everyone for a bit of a run in it, which was an absolute blast. With the joy rides done, it was time to head back to the playground and attempt one more track. There was still a scratch of afternoon light left. We needed to get Mark's Prado dirty again, and Ben, the park owner, had one last challenge in mind for us. Do 
not leaving a trail of oil behind me, I'm happy. <laughs> Being the end of the day, we've come back to our playground that we were at yesterday. And over to my left here, we've got three lovely hills. Guidance of Simon was fantastic because there is a few hairy moments if you're not watching it. You get your line wrong, there could be an issue. But what a great little playground. Middle one, please. Roger. So after lunch and having a bit of a play in the tank, we come back to the proving ground and the three tracks that we've been playing on. They were all technical. They all had their little challenges. But we all got there. It was excellent. Chris, you've got medium, easy, or easier? I'm thinking the easiest line. It seemed like it was going to be a lot easier than that. I stopped, lost all the momentum. So Simon put that rock back in the right place and I had to just sort of use that to get that little bit of pop, which was all I needed, and I got going. Woo. Try it with just the, the button and see how we go. Bring it up, Drifter. <laughs> Once again, Simon made me go up the hardest one. that are here in this little section, absolutely incredible. How good is that? <laughs> we had a look at him, we thought, wow, this looks way too tricky. There's no way that we're driving up this. Really steep climb, a lot of couple of steps, but we thought give it a crack. Simon was guiding me, he'd done a fantastic job all day, and I, I don't know whether he did it on purpose or what, but I seen a bit of a smile on his face said, keep going, I kept going, and next thing, bang. I saw it happening. <laughs> that didn't sound good. There goes the tyre. It's off the bead. Popped both beads off. We've brought the vehicle up a bit further, so more level ground. Chocked the vehicle. Got the half jack out. Some a bit of pressure from managed to receive the inside bead. Fortunately, it wasn't too much of a delay, and we're back on the road again. We've tested the three little climbs at this section of the play area and they are all good to go. So we're just going to let the team loose, let them drive what they want and have some fun. Three, two, one, go. We're now at the end of our couple of days at the Swan Gully four-wheel drive park. It's been awesome couple of days. It's been full on. It's the first time I've been to one of these four-wheel drive parks. Really great concept. Really pleased that I took up Simon who's off to come up here. We enjoyed this place, and I'll tell you what, one thing is for sure, I'll be back here because there's so many tracks here that I didn't even get to see. It's a beautiful area, absolutely brilliant camping, brilliant four-wheel driving. South East Queensland hasn't got a huge amount of tracks. We're not the Victorian high country. But to come out here, see Ben the owner, great guy, fantastic park, you'll have a fantastic time. I think you would have seen from the tracks and the attempts we've done today that you can choose experienced lines, you can choose novice lines, but really the, the challenge out here is to get out and solve the problem yourself. So that's why we appeal to skills of all levels, vehicles of all levels, and you just take the time, pick your tracks and choose what you want to do without damaging your vehicle. Awesome weather, great company, learnt heaps and certainly we're going to be back here sometime soon.